Number 41. If A plus B equals 45, B plus C equals 71, and A plus C equals 58, what is A plus B plus C? Is it 87, 88, 89, or 90? So to do this, if I have these three equations, we will employ um, addition. Uh, we, the sum of all the numbers on the left side should be equal to the sum of all the terms or numbers on the right-hand side. So in the left side, there are two A's, there are also two B's, and there are also two C's. So on the left-hand side, the sum is 2A plus 2B plus 2C equals the sum on the right-hand side, the sum of 45, 71, and 58 as 174. Dividing both sides by 2, you will get A plus B plus C, which is 87. So even without knowing what the actual numbers are, I'm sure that 87 is their sum. Letter A. 42. A certain substance loses one half of its mass every 30 minutes. Initially, there are 9,216 grams of the said substance. How many grams will be left after three hours? 144, 72, 288, or 36? So from here, how many 30 minutes are there in three hours? There are six, right? Which means this 9,216 grams will be multiplied by one half six times. Hence, 9,216 raised to one half to the sixth power, and you, you, you could use your calculators to simplify this. I'm sure you will get 144 letter A. 43. What is the average of 7, 11, 15, until all the way until 179 and 183? 92, 93, 94, 95. What others usually do is that they talk, they have the longer method. They would find the sum of everything and divide by the total number of scores. That's fine. But actually, if you could notice, these are terms of an arithmetic sequence. And the shortcut in getting the mean or the average of the terms of an arithmetic sequence or series is to get the mean of the first term and the last term. Hence, all we have to do is add the first and last term and divide by 2. So 7 plus 8, 183 divided by 2, that's 190 divided by 2, which is 95. Letter D. So I'm sure that this answer is correct. You could verify that on your own if you wish, but I'm sure this is the answer. 44. Which of these could be the sum of four consecutive integers? Five, uh, would it be 500, 510, 520, or 540? What do you think? So if you have four integers, if you let x to be the smallest integer here, then uh, x plus 1, x plus 2, and x plus 3 are the next three integers. And if you add all of them, their answer is 4x plus 6. And therefore, the sum uh, of any four consecutive integers should be of the form 4x plus 6. And remember that since x should be an integer in this problem, Let's suppose 500 is the correct answer here. Let's check if 500 could be a sum. So equating that to 4x plus 6, subtracting both sides by 6, you have 4x equals 494, and dividing both sides by 4, x here is 123.5, which is not an integer. Uh, Remember, this does not satisfy the given condition of having integers. 
So 500 cannot be the sum of four consecutive integers. How about if their sum is 510? Equating 4x plus 6 to 510, you have 4x plus 6 equals 510 minus 6 both sides gives 4x equals 504. Dividing both sides by 4, you get 126, which is an integer. So it could be expressed as 126 plus 127 plus 128 plus 120. Uh, 126, 127, 128, 129. You could verify on your own that C and D will not result to an integer. I'm sure of that. You, you may check. And another thing is, if you remember, if, if, if you subtract after subtracting by six, you could check if it's divisible by four, if the last two digits are divisible by four. Remember, we could utilize our principles for number theory as well. So I'm sure... Letter B here is the correct answer. 45. If one half the sum of A, B, and C is 58, and three-fourths the sum of D and E is 33, what is A plus B plus C plus D plus E? Did you answer 154, 158, 160, or 164? Let's not look for the specific values of A, B, and C. What we can do here is given the first equation, we can multiply both sides by two to clear off fractions. Hence, you will get A plus B plus C equals 58 times two or 116. For the second equation, three fourths of D plus E, to, deter, to get the value of D plus E, I decided to multiply both sides with four thirds. So D plus E is equal to four thirds of 33. Um, 33 divided by three is 11 and four times 11 will be 44. So D plus E is 44. So if you add A, B and C and D and E, you will have A plus B plus C plus D plus E, which is just the sum of 116 and 44 which is 160, letter C. Okay. 46. Is the set of natural numbers always close under ordinary division? No. Yes, cannot be determined or always. Um, speaking about closure property, if you operate any two uh, num natural numbers here using a uh, division, will it result to a natural number? If A and B are natural numbers, then A over B should be a natural number. That is, if this particular, if the set of natural numbers, that is, if it is close under division. However, if I suppose that A is 3 and B is 4, then you will have 3 over 4, which when simplified is 0. 0.75, which is not a natural number. Hence, there are uh, certain elements in the set of natural numbers such that when operated will not result to a number that is within the set. Hence, the set of natural numbers is not close under ordinary division. Letter A. 47. Simplify and express your answer in factorial form. 20 factorial plus 19 factorial divided by 21. Did you answer 18 factorial, 19 factorial, 20 factorial, or 21 factorial? Remember that 20 factorial means 20 times 19 times 18 uh, times 17 all the way until 1. 19 factorial means 19 times 18 times 17 all the way until 1. And if you have two or more factorials that you are uh, always remember that the smallest factorial is their GCF. So in the numerator, I could factor the 19 factorial. 20 factorial divided by 19 factorial will give you 20 plus 19 factorial divided by 19 factorial is 1. 
So I have 20 plus 1 inside the parenthesis. In fact, this 20 plus 1 is the same as is 21, which is which could be um, divided with the 21 in the denominator. Hence, you will have 19 factorial letter B. 48. Four swimmers vie for first and second places in a swimathon 2021 competition. In how many ways can these be awarded? Considering that there are on, there are no ties for any position. 12, 24, 36, or 48. Four runners, I mean four swimmers, two awards only, and order here matters. So this is a permutation question. We see that N is four and R is two. So we have 4P2 equals four factorial. The definition, by the way, is of NPR is N factorial all over N minus R quantity factorial. Here, you have four factorial all over four minus two quantity factorial. The denominator simplifies to two factorial. The four factorial in the numerator could be expressed as four times three times two factorial with the intention to uh, divide two factorial in the denominator. So you will have four times three, which is 12. Letter A is the correct answer. You could also utilize what we call the slot method. The first place could be occupied by any four people. And if one of them is already first place, that means there are three people who are viable for the second place. And by the fundamental counting principle, four times three will give you 12. Okay, 49. My cell phone password consists of three digits from zero to nine, followed by four letters from the English alphabet. How many passwords are possible if no digit nor letter is repeated? So this still involves permutation, but without repeating digits. We have to remember that the English alphabet has 26 letters. And uh, the digits, you could have 0 to 9 that there's 10 of them. So there are 10 P3 ways to choose the three digits and 26 permutation ways to choose the four letters because anyway repetition here is not allowed so using the concept now we have 10 factorial all over 10 minus 3 quantity factorial times for the 26 p4 that's 26 factorial all over 26 minus 4 quantity factorial simplifying each gives 10 factorial all over 7 factorial times 26 factorial all over 22 factorial and uh, the first one could be expressed as 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial because anyway, we could cancel this. For the second one, we have 26 times 25 times 24 times 23 times 22 factorial because anyway, we could cancel this. So you have 10 times 9 times 8 times 26 times 25 times 24 times 23. And using our calculators, we get 258,336,000 passwords. Letter C. Fifty. How many distinct permutations are there in the word Filipinas? A, B, C, or D, which is correct? You could notice that in this particular word, certain um, elements are repeated, particularly letter P, letter I. You could see that there are two P's and three I's and the rest of the letters appeared only once. And there are a total of nine letters. So using the concept of indistinct or permutation or permutation with repeated elements, we have nine factorial all over the repetitions, two factorial times three factorial all over times one factorial, one factorial, one factorial, one factorial. Or if you wish, you may simply 
uh, do not include the one factorials anymore because you were just dividing by one. And it will give you the same answer. And using your calculators, you will have 30,240 ways to achieve such. Or there are a total of 30,240 distinct permutations in all. Letter B. I hope you learned something of the discussion today and I wish you all the best in life. With that, TYVM, thank you very much and a great day to one and all. God bless everyone.